Hey everybody, welcome to Real Talk, the show where today's topics meet timeless truth. And I'm your host, Justin Miller. And today we're talking about God and money. Money affects everybody every day in all kinds of ways. And God has a lot to say to us about that in the Bible, and especially as Christians. Like, what do we do with our money? Whose money is it anyway? Uh, do we have to give? Is tithing an absolute or is it a conviction? These are some of the things we're going to talk about today on Real Talk with our illustrious panel, starting with Mark Montemayor. Happy to be here. Thanks. Good to see you. And Howard Dayton of Compass Ministries, right? That's right. Great to be here. Good to have you, Howard. Thank you. And Patrick Moore. I'm here, and thank you for being my friend. Yes, and Dan Holland. <laughs> Good to be here. Yep, uh, I thank you guys. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, when it comes to money, because there's a lot of different aspects of finance, and as Christians, there's a lot of different aspects, um, but what is, what, what would you say is like the most important principle for Christians to understand when it comes to money? And we got to go to Howard, because like, <laughs> you're our resident expert today. Well, just a little bit of history, first of yeah, all. Yeah, give me uh, that. I uh, had, um, right after I met Christ, uh, started to meet with a small group of guys in business, and one of them became my partner. Uh, he challenged me to join him in the study of all things the Bible to find out what it said about money, uh, and it took us a year. Uh, we picked out every verse dealing with money, and there were 2,350 verses in the Bible dealing with how to handle money and possessions. 15% of everything that Jesus Christ said had to do with it. That so would it take Patrick. 2,350 days to get to all of those, because don't Plus, you do like a verse a day? <laughs> I'm on 256 right now. <laughs> that's, that's I'm, all, awesome. I'm getting there. That's right. And the uh, thing that blew me away was that uh, it was so much on God's heart, because number one, He loves us like crazy, knew every one of us on the planet would have challenges with money from time to time sure. and wanted to equip us to handle it well. Uh, and number two, it's a primary competitor with Christ for the Lordship of our lives. So it's a big deal from God's perspective. And I think the biggest aha for me uh, was the, the passage that dealt with uh, God's ownership. Mm -hmm. Because I had never embraced the notion that God owned my stuff. Uh, Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, including uh, what mm -hmm. we have, and that we're called to be faithful managers. The Bible calls us stewards mm -hmm. uh, of what God has. And so it's it's fun to see that the Lord cares so much about us and He just doesn't talk about how to handle 10%. He tells us how to handle all of it, yeah. 100%. Great principle. And I first learned that actually from you via video. You walked out onto a video screen um, in the mid-90s in someone's living room because we were doing Crown Ministry. <laughs> and that was, that was your deal. And it was. It was a life-changing principle because nobody thinks any, their stuff is anybody else's. And then mm -hmm. it's just a revolutionary principle, and it's actually a very basic principle that I was missing as a Christian. Yeah. This isn't my stuff. This is his stuff. How does he want me to use it for him? Yeah, and a lot of people live their life. I, I'm a visual learner. I like picture books. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 this imagery came to me um, a few years back. I saw a preacher, somebody talking about it, but it was just this imagery of so many people hold their stuff like this. And really, God wants us to like this, where it's just passing through our hands because it's all His. It's just our responsibility to steward it well, use it to bring Him glory, bring Him fame, um, to, to, to be responsible mm -hmm. with it. So there's something really beautiful about that transition in people's lives, probably like yours, when it went from like this, it's my stuff, I'm hanging on to it for dear life, to this, where it's like, hey, it's His. I'm just here managing it, stewarding it, using it to hopefully bring you know, bring good for him. So yeah. the question was about the principles. I think you asked. Um, yeah. But I think self. I think for me, it come. It goes to the foundation of self control. We live in a world where we believe we can have everything. We deserve everything. We so we may not only not be generous givers. We don't even save money for our future right. for this. So we're just rather than practicing self control, we're out of control. Yeah. To a great degree. Yeah. Yeah, I think th that's absolutely the principle that hit for me. And, and, and ownership, like yeah, because yeah. Uh, early on as Christians, for us it was it was tough to think about tithing and to think about what we were going to give away. And then as we started to give and be generous with God, it, we we kind of had this newer perspective and convictions. It's less about the ten or twelve or whatever the percent is, and more about what we keep and what do we do with what we keep. And and as as we experienced some 
some conviction and challenge in that area, it just really freed us up to understand this isn't ours, it is passing through, and, and we want to make sure that we get God a return on what he's invested in, in us and through yeah. us. Because if it starts with God owns it all, then when I give to him, it's not like I'm giving away. He gave it to me in the first place. So, and I'm not managing the 10, I'm managing the whole, but the first 10%, I honor him with that. So mm -hmm. it's, it seems like there's a cycle involved. Well, yeah, let's talk about if God <clears throat> owns it all and I'm yeah. just a manager, what are some things that he's expecting from me then? And, and again, I, I think mm -hmm. this is just really practical <clears throat> stuff because while it was somewhat basic as a pastor now, I look back and go, some of these principles were basic that I was learning through Crown and you know, through your study and now with Compass. Truthfully, they were revolutionary because I just had never been taught that. Yeah. And I certainly wasn't living like that. Yeah. So if it's all God's, now what? Yeah. Well, I think the basics are that you uh, need to be generous uh, okay. as a ex way to express our love for Christ and what he's done for us. Uh, if we have debt, we're encouraged to get out of debt. Uh, mm -hmm. Proverbs 22, 7, the, the borrower is slave to the lender and the Lord wants us to be free to serve him uh, and the people he puts in our path and not, not our lender. Uh, and then we're to save uh, for the future. Uh, Proverbs uh, 21, 20, the wise man saves for the future, the mm -hmm. foolish man spends whatever he gets. So it's, mm -hmm. it isn't rocket science. It right. really is not rocket science. Uh, but it's so important to understand that it's on God's heart and it's not a person sharing their opinion. Uh, it's based on the truth of scripture. Yeah, yeah and I, I like what you said, it's God's heart because that's what God reveals in the Bible is his heart. Yeah. And, and so because he loves me, he wants to help me. And I'm going, okay, God, w what would help me? And certainly getting out of debt yeah. would help me. Yeah. God didn't just lay down some principle. I'm going to make it really hard for you to get ahead financially. So I'm going to say no debt. Yeah. He said, no, it's terrible to be in debt. I think we can all testify to that. Yeah. And God said that early on in the Bible. Yeah. Hey, for my people, I don't want you guys doing this yeah. because it'll really shackle you and it'll limit you from serving me and being free to serve me. Um, some other hmm. principles or? Well, one of the things uh, in our family that we're trying to, we've been trying to use for years now and trying to implement is, we just try to think about things from a, like an eternal significance. And, and so I know that that's kind of weird like when you're going grocery shopping. I'm not talking about like not eating, but you know, there's a little bit of like, Whew. especially in today where it's that really? have it all attitude. I mean, cause yeah. I, you, you say, you, you know, people want it all, you can have it all. If you go to Amazon, they have everything. They do. I mean, you can order any. Do you know that the web, the internet? Oh, you heard about no. that? Internet? <laughs> Here we go. It's on your phone. I don't. Oh, you. You still have the flip. My bad. Um, but anyways, hey, he's a little sensitive about being old school. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm highly sensitive. It's all right. We're cool. But continue with that. because I like but, learning something. Yeah, from I'm going to teach you something new here. Um, <laughs> but there is a little bit of that, like you know, when you're considering, especially like large purchases. You know, like, do you really need the? Do you really need the fifty thousand dollar car? You know, can can you not go into debt and get the twenty thousand dollar car? I mean, and I'm talking. I'm, we lived this. I mean, Hold we've on. done that. I was that. just gonna say we hashtag baller status. Hey, I'm telling you, you got a white suburban. I know, and that was <laughs> and it and makes that, me envy. And that was that was in Laurel. If Laurel was here, we would both say that was the biggest regret of mm. our financial decisions of our whole marriage for the last sixteen years, buying that that wow. car. Wow. And, and yet we paid it off because we, we nice. immediately, it was so funny how God you know, has a sense of humor, I think. We bought that thing and in, within 12 months we went through a financial class and it was like, that was dumb. <laughs> you know, it was like, why did you buy oh, that? You so. always take a financial class right after you've done something <laughs> Exactly. That's exactly. when I took Crown. It was like, exactly. like ooh, ooh, this hurts. But, but now it's like when we're making decisions, we're going, okay, what is best, you know, let's take care of our needs, you know, and, and let's do the right things. But as we look forward, is this important? Like, is this value? Is That's this bringing good. eternal significance? Is this yeah. going to change lives? Is this going to better our family to put us in a position where good. we can love people and hopefully lead more people to Christ? And, and build his church. And that's, I, I think that's, that's important. You know, what, what Howard was talking about was the heart issue. And, and money is one of the things most apt to get between us and God from mm -hmm. a heart perspective. And I think that's why it's so tough. That's why we get so defensive. It's why we're so uh, selfish about how much we get to keep or how much we have to give away. And, uh, and, and really what's welling up inside of us is this desire to, to be happy and to satisfy our needs. And you talk about the, the discipline piece or the self-control mm -hmm. piece. It, it really is about flipping it around and having God's heart. Yeah. And, and, and he wants great things for us, but he also wants to do great things through us. And a lot of times 
it's our money or lack thereof or the decisions we've made about money that get in the way of our ability to be used by God or to be fully focused on Him. So one of the big principles, Howard, you brought this out right at the start, you cannot serve two masters. It's either going to be the Lord, and He doesn't, He's not vague about the other master. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be the Lord or money. Yeah. It's almost offensive. Yeah. It's almost uh, because it takes such ownership of us, and we use phrases like, I deserve, God wants me to have. And we end up in a situation where we've talked our way right out of having Christ as master or Lord and something else, our desires, and we've made it okay. And then we take a financial class right after yes, we, we do. buy a <laughs> it, It's class. so much a part of our culture. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I can't tell you how many times people, people quote that this are, they, they quote it like it's from the Bible, like the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So the yeah. pursuit of happiness is what our culture is about, and therefore, if I'm going to be happy, God would want me to be happy. So if I'm going to be happy, it's going to take money. If you can get to that one, if you can get to, well, God loves me, so he wants me to be happy. You can do a lot of things from oh, yeah. there. It's that is your core that is tenet true. of faith. God wants me to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> and that girl makes me happy. <laughs> now, and that karma, yeah, it's amazing. And that's, that's the justification. One of the things that's come up here a couple times is the issue of debt. I'm not to the place where I think debt is sinful. Oh. I don't. I feel like there should have been like a ooh there. No. <laughs> no, I, well, were you waiting there? What we didn't I, hear was the studio <laughs> audience collectively <laughs> gasped. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> My point is though, I, but, but, the, but it doesn't invalidate the principle that the borrower is slave to the lender. Because you bow down every month to the mortgage. I owe a mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, and try not paying them. But that it's not sinful is your point. That's right. my, that's it's my not, point. It's so not ad advisable. It's not best, but it's not simple. It's not best. I like that phrase. Okay. It's dead is I, not best at all. I think I could agree all. with that too because yeah. I think if we, because some people will paint it in that light. If you're in debt at all or if you have a mortgage, well, then you're in sin. I, I definitely would right. not say that. In our culture, it would be very difficult to, I mean, unless you're wealthy, to just go buy houses with cash all the time mm -hmm. at 25 years old. Sure. But I think the best investment for that young couple is probably to buy a house. Yes. And they will have to mortgage it at first, most likely. Be unless wise. they sell their Suburban. And then they can buy two houses. <laughs> we live, we <laughs> live yeah, in, in Suburban. We lived in the Suburban. Yes. That's how we got out of debt. <laughs> that is not true. Great testimony. And we'll hear more about that. we got to take a break. So thanks for tuning in to Real Talk. We will be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back to Real Talk. And we are talking about money today. And this is pretty good. I'm having a good time with you guys. And I think we're getting into some really important stuff. And so I, I wanted to double click on giving for a minute because this is a stumbling block for a lot of people hmm. and a lot of Christians, particularly tithing. Like you mentioned generosity, Howard. Do you think, because I think generosity is definitely part of our call as Christians. Do you think tithing is a bi biblical <clears throat> absolute suggestion. What's your take on tithing? Well, certainly Ooh. in the Old Testament, uh, it was required <clears throat> yeah. uh, by the law. The New Testament really doesn't uh, command tithing. Uh, what, what you see in the New Testament is more giving as God has provided for you uh, and what God calls you to do. And there's uh, a couple times where the New Testament focuses on sacrificial giving and, and mm -hmm. the Lord elevates that. And I think, uh, at least for me, uh, when I first met Christ, I had no desire to give at all. Uh, I went to a church that didn't take a collection, which was just fine for me. Uh, <laughs> but then I learned what the Bible said about giving, was motivated to give. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really has been a journey for mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. uh, where we started and we finally got up to 10% of our, of our income. Then so you eased your way up to the we did. tithe? Okay. We did. Yep. And then as I learned and, and grew in this area. So I think for a lot of people it's, it's uh, a, a, a matter of education and being exposed to other people who are generous. Yeah. Uh, that was huge yeah. for us and we you know, ultimately were given about 30% of our income. And because uh, we just loved the, the whole notion of uh, of being able to honor Christ and love Christ in a tangible way as we give to the church, to folks in need. Uh, it's been a, a yeah, privilege. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing. But when people first find out 
that you are giving away 10% or more of your money, they're like, no. Yeah. They, they literally can't believe, because that, that's a totally foreign concept to someone who's not a Christian. While they may be generous, um, truthfully, if they added it all up, it's not much most yeah. of the time. That's yeah. just, mm -hmm. we're just not naturally that way. We're selfish, as you mentioned earlier. Um, so, okay, what, do you guys agree with what Howard's saying on the tithing thing? I, the thing that comes to me is, uh, even aside from the tithing specifically, okay, so think about this way, partly I think about it. If you believe in something, if you're passionate about something, if something is beneficial towards you, meaning like the local church you're a part of, okay, um, I know a lot of families that love the sports club that their kid plays in, and they support it. They sponsor it, they oh, yeah. buy gear, they do all these things, and they're passionate about it, and I'm thinking, that's great. Sports are fun. My kids play tons of sports, mm. but I'm part of something that's eternally changing lives through the church, yeah. through the through the local church that I'm a part of and that mm. other people are part of. <clears throat> if it's that significant, why wouldn't I want to be a part of supporting that? Like, why right. wouldn't I want? Like, I, I guess that's where I struggle sometimes. Is people get so bent out of shape about church, and I get some of it is, you know, there are some goofballs out there, you know, wasting church money and not representing Christ properly. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, the majority of churches that are doing it right, why wouldn't we want to be a part of that? Like, why wouldn't you want to support that? People are very generous with other organizations and you stuff. You can usually tell too if there's an abusive system. I yeah. think you can observe think the lifestyle can. of the church or pastor and kind yes. of go, yeah. I mean, some people are attracted to that, though. Yeah. If the pastor drives a Bentley, well, oh, I want a Bentley. Sure. So I'm going to follow a guy with a Bentley. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you go to real life, you're following a guy with a 02 Dodge Ram. And then so. me and a 96 Forerunner, so we're good. A 96 Forerunner. Yes. Yeah. You might have Dan B. What are you driving, Dan? I drive an 06 Chevy Silverado. Yeah, you're, we're both beating Dan. Yeah. That's bling. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> <big silver. laughs> I've seen your Silverado. How are you getting paid? No, I'm just <laughs> no. Yeah, no, don't worry. Dan gets paid a lot more. Than you. Wow! <laughs> oh my goodness. What are you I, thinking I, about this tithing giving thing, Dan? I like what Howard said to distinguish between the Old and New Testament. The way it's fallen in my life is this: um, I need a measurement to go by, um, and in, I do agree that there's the there's the, in the New Testament there's no number given, but it's been my habit to give at least ten percent. I found that when I manage the first 10% well, I also, I manage the back 90 much better. I make better decisions when it comes to, well, am I going to borrow money to buy a house? How much am I going to borrow? I make decisions based on that 90% because Jesus it's the Jesus affirmed the tithe also in the New Testament. He, well, he, I mean, it's technically the New Testament, but not really until he dies and resurrects. But, if you, but he affirmed the tithe and, and as he's blasting the Pharisees for not having justice and mercy. He, he, he commends them essentially for their tithing. Mm -hmm. And he says, you guys tithe really well, even you know, yeah. pharisaically down to your mint dill and cumin, your spices. But you really should be just and merciful, but not give up tithing. So he, he kind of advocates, that's a good I, practice. To I agree God. because it's a sowing and reaping principle. So right. if you sow little, you will reap little. Don't be surprised by reaping your small crop. You, you only put a little bit of seed in the ground, but if you sow uh, much, then you'll, you'll reap much. So. I agree with that. I've even had people who will say, well, but based on your level of income, we will say whether you should tithe or not. Like someone's poor, they don't have enough. I'm thinking, why would you rob somebody of the benefit of just being obedient to what they believe the Lord wants them to do? Let them be a generous giver. The widow's might, percentage wise, she gave. Well, she's about all in 100%. there, right? She's, she's all in. in. Yeah, That's she's right. all in. So, um, and Jesus didn't say, no, sweetie, take that back. You yeah. shouldn't do that. What he said is, that's a lot of faith, and I guarantee you God's going to bless that. And, that, and as yeah. a pastor, I want to make sure, too, to be clear that it's not that we're not acknowledging that people are in financial difficulties and struggles. We're right. not being ridiculous about it, not realizing, hey, like, I have seven mouths to feed in my house, too. Like, I've got a lot of, how, like, a lot of... And one of them's yours. And one of them's mine, which counts as, like, <laughs> three. That's, like, ten people. So, so let's, wow. you know, let's be the church that, and let's be churches and, and Christians that acknowledge, hey, it is a struggle, and finances yeah. are difficult, and so let us help you with that as well, you know? And I think exactly. the churches that are, that are thriving right now are acknowledging that, saying, hey, we want to help you help you figure this out. We want to we want to show you materials and ministries like Compass and others that help you get out of right. debt, help you manage your Amen. money because it's silly for us to stand up on stage and talk about all this and not acknowledge the fact that people struggle with it. And As so, a pastor, I, I'm way more concerned about what God has for people than what the church can get from yes, people. Exactly. That, that's offensive to me even. It's yep. like I, 
I am blessed because I follow Jesus and I have demonstrated faith in my life. I've just watched what he does, and particularly in the financial yes. areas. You continue to step out in faith. Like to me, the, whether the tithe or not, the tithe was a long time ago. That, that's, again, if that's Old Testament, I'm a New Testament Christian, been saved by grace, and it's all God's. Give away as much as you can yeah. Yeah. and figure out how to live on the rest. I think sometimes we talk in ch churches or we hear messages from churches saying, hey, give, give, give. And the truth to your point is, sometimes people need a lot of help because their lifestyle, they want to, right. but their lifestyle, the choices they've made leading up to that point might be a place where like Howard did, they say, I'm gonna start giving because I'm, I'm under conviction and I, I build to whatever I believe that yeah. that should be. So their lifestyles yeah. are just out of balance. Yeah, and yeah. I do think 10% is a great place to start. So I have a friend who calls them training wheels <laughs> you know, in the Old Testament. <laughs> uh, and the, That's pretty you know, good. The, the believer in Christ uh, should have that as a goal, as a, yes. as a minimum, uh, but mm -hmm. not be restricted uh, to that amount. Yeah, and, God, nobody, and nobody should feel guilty if they're at 3% or if they're at 7% or if they, like even if they just gave for the first time and it was, you know what I mean? Like we should all, we should all help bring each other along. That's an exact scripture in the New Testament that no one should give reluctantly or under compulsion. Mm -hmm. So not, it's not about guilt, but each one should give what they've decided in their heart to give. Yes. So you work that out with God and then you give it cheerfully. Mm -hmm. Like yes. God, I'm excited to give this to you. And if I'm trying to give a number that I can't get excited about and I keep thinking about, oh, I can't believe I wrote that check. It's killing. Then that's <laughs> not. But but I think God gets excited. Let's let's say it's an Old Testament principle, and somebody is doing 10 percent. You know, and they're tithing. God's not going, guys. That was Old Testament. What are you doing? I'm not going to bless that. He's going, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I love you, and I see the faith that it takes to do that. Yeah. And He's going to bless you. Well, yes. faith. And Jesus said that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so I, I do think whether it's three percent or 10 percent or 30 percent mm -hmm. or 50 percent, whatever the number is. Monty, you're at 50%? I am not, but I did okay. talk to a guy who is. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and I was blown away because his heart is, you can tell where his heart is because he's putting his treasure there too. And it's to see God's kingdom grow. And he, he recognizes that. And, and what he would say is, man, 50%, half is nothing because Jesus gave everything. Well, he's, you're one of my financial accountability partners. And, um, you know, we'll pray and talk about what we're going to give to the Lord through the church here. Mm -hmm. And we've had some times... I mean, I, I don't, I, it's not competitive, but there have been times when you told me what you were given and I was like, well, yeah, I'm giving that too. I'm going to, I'm going to give more than that <laughs> because I'm like, man, because he, he's got more faith than me and it, but it inspires me and it challenges me. And some of the talks we've had where you're like, I'm trying to get to that place where it's more about what I'm giving to God and how I can afford to live off the rest. Yeah. It's not about like worried about the 90 and yeah, I'll yeah. make sure he gets 10. It's like, I can give more than 10. I, I, we started do like I do our household budget now is based on it. I, I don't start with 10. I just start with, well, we're going to, we're going to try to live on 80% or 75% mm -hmm. or whatever the number is. The rest goes to God. That's the first piece. But then we, we're trying to, to shrink what we need to live up. And, 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 and a lot of it comes through the church. We do other things also. And for us, that's just been the conviction of mm -hmm. how much we're going to keep. And, and I, I remember at one point, this is before I was in, in vocational ministry, I, or as an early Christian, we were, we, were, we were starting to give more generously. And I remember just praying, God, if we just made this much, it would be so much, like, I could tithe mm -hmm. right out of the gate and it would be so much easier. Yeah. And I remember he really did bless us. And it was some years later and, and my bonus check was as much as I had said I just needed for the whole year. Yeah. Wow. And, and I remember in that moment thinking, wow, that's great. And it's already spent because we got to do this to the house. We got to do that. We're going to give this. We're going to do. And God, if we just had, and, and I was really convicted of, it seems like in my mind, no matter how much I have, I just need a little more. Mm -hmm. and right. I really had to flip our thinking around for, <clears throat> right. why aren't we living? And I heard this phrase from somebody, you should live life at a profit. Mm. And I thought, you know what? I'm kind of it's, it's coming in and going out. There's no profit to my life. And I wanted to figure yes. out how does, what does that look like financially, spiritually? And it would seem like, I mean, and you would know, but it would seem like the intentionality is a big piece of this. You Absolutely. gotta be intentional about it, right? That's right. I mean, um, you can't not have a plan. Yeah. You gotta have a plan. It's called yeah. a budget with money, right? That's it. If you don't yeah. write down and have a plan for your dollar bill, uh, I That's guarantee- That's another compass principle. I guarantee yeah. someone yeah. else out there has a plan for that dollar That's bill. That's right. And, they, and they'll get it from you. Fail to plan, you plan to fail. Amen, brother. And you know, for us, the the largest single line item in our budget 
is what we give to God specifically through the church. Mm -hmm. And then we give more than that. We've got orphans we support and all kinds of other things. And again, I, I can't imagine most people would be like, oh yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. But it took us time and a lot of practical faith to get to that place where I'm so glad that that's the number one thing in my budget. The biggest line item is what we give as a family to God. Yeah. And then watching my kids adopt that principle where I don't tell my kids, hey, every dollar that comes in, 10% better go to God. I, we just model it and we get excited about, like, look what God's doing as we give to Him. Not only is He changing lives, but then look at this blessing. And we count every single blessing that comes in sideways because He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. So anything that good that happens in our house, we're going, look what God did. And you, I wonder if that has anything to do with That's this. another good and so principle. My kids love to give. Keep, you could have a notebook laying on your kitchen counter, just write down when God blesses in unexpected ways. That's a great principle to get your, your perspective of money right. straightened up. Right, okay, we gotta, we gotta stop. <clears throat> I gotta buy, I, I have two more shows on this that we can do. <laughs> <laughs> Howard's got two shows he can do by himself. All right, well anyway, thank you guys for being here and Howard, especially you today. Loved it. Appreciate really you did. being here. Thank you guys for tuning in to Real Talk and as always, we kick off the conversation and you keep it going at home, at church, online. Husband and wife may need to sit down and pray and talk. But until next time, keep it real and remember, God's crazy about you.